base camp. Uh, so base camp had a very good facility. Uh, there were a lot, lot of tents, dining tents, and f uh, as far as food is concerned, you can get any kind of food they will prepare for you. So uh, uh, people, people from all over the world, they come. So they, the, all the chef who is there, they are in the base camp, right? Uh, they kind of expert in cooking all kind of food. But for me, uh, I usually eat the Nepali food. Uh, they call it dal bhat, which is our bhat and dali. And that was like my favorite food. I was very happy actually. And a lot of our food, uh, food is same with the Nepal, Nepali food. So for me, uh, I have no problem. I was very happy like just to, uh, with the Sherpa and uh, eat their food. So all 10 has a, a individual 10 at the base camp. Uh, they will put a mat. So it's again top of a glacier. There will be one small mat also, then pillow. Then there's a sleeping bag. This is the sleeping bag, my sleeping bag. Uh, you, you need to carry this. So there are some of the photos of base camp. So it's a actually huge area. Uh, so this is our dining tent. So you can see like it has a very good facility like a Uh, you can see like uh, the base camp uh, uh, dining tent, uh, it's very good, like even they put kind of artificial grass, uh, like they said like <laughs> you'll feel home like, uh, so that's all the idea. But the idea is that like you should be comfortable at the base camp so that your recovery is well. So when you go up, come back, uh, and if you don't have a good recovery, then you'll not be able to go to the next, uh, next phase. So uh, once you were there, all uh, your training is started first. Very important then is uh, how to use the oxygen system. So uh, you'll, you'll, you'll practice with this because this is the one after camp two, uh, you'll be living on this system. So you have to know very well how this whole system operates. So after that, uh, second phase is the all ice training will start and uh, you, whatever gears you have, right? You kind of practice and uh, so th these are the, some of the like uh, small small ice block. Uh, so we'll come to the next like where it's really like... Uh, okay. So here, here basically I'm just practicing, like uh, try to practice. Uh, So you have to cross a lot of ladders, we'll see in the next videos. Um, so you have to train for that too also. So this is again a base camp, this is a 360 view of like base camp. So uh, usually the whoever company they constantly ass ass assess the like situation like your where the tent is, so they keep on maintaining the tent. So this is actually this is the famous Kumbu ice fall. Uh, I have a lot of videos on that. Uh, so base camp has a facility even to wash your clothes. So I am one day just washing some of the clothes. So you can take a shower. So it's just like in our old days like. Uh, they will uh, warm the water in a bucket, they will give it, so you go to a tent, there's a sour tent, you go there and take bath. Okay. So, after two, three days of race, uh, then your real climb is start, is start to the high camp. So, first challenge is the Kumbu, uh, Kumbu ice fall. Um, This is really how the Kumbu ice fall look like. So you have to go navigate it through all uh, you'll see something.
these are the all plants you need to do. Uh, actually, this is a moving glacier. Uh, the, so, uh, this glacier actually moves uh, three to four feet in a day. So, it requires a constant maintenance. So, that team I was telling you, Icefall Doctor, they are the one who really maintain it. It's one of the dangerous jobs in the world. I'll have some. This is the night climbing you start. So, do there some ladders here? This is where like you need to go from here, like go up. So you have to cross many crevices with the ladder. So here I'm crossing one of the crevices. So you cross about like a seven to eight ladder and you have to cross this whole area of six times. You know, three times going up and three times coming down. So there's always rope. Uh, this is the another. There's so many of them. I will see. So here, like you are climbing with multiple ladders. Uh, so they they like uh, there's a screw called a ice screw. They put the ice screw. Then they uh, they uh, this ropes are tied to them, and then some ice block. So behind is my Sherpa. So this is how it looks like when you like really go. So you go through different covers. So actually, it's kind of a NASA display, like kind of a different formation it happens. So this is night. Uh, so those 
uh, earlier videos are like uh, when morning so but uh, you kind of uh, two third of climbing happen at the night So going down, there's a device here, uh, we call it ATC device, there's a way to go down. <laughs> so once you go through that Kumbu ice ball, uh, you get a camp one. So this is our 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 tent. Uh, so each company like group, right? They put the tents in. You can see like different. Mm -hmm. So the open one is my tent. Uh, So you can see the dining tent and dining table. So this is the way to go to the camp two and camp three. So this is where like you see the end, right? This is the Kumbu Ice Fall. So after climbing the Kumbu Ice Fall, and that's the way to come to the camp one. So the camp, from camp one to camp two, again I was mentioning about the, uh, then it's a lot of covers, then there are some ladders you cross, it's still ladders are there. So some person there is no rope, so you tie with your Sherpa, so that like if you fall in somewhere, right, you will be able to help in the same way like if he falls, right? So camp two has a actually good facility. It's top of a rock, uh, rock bed. Uh, there's a good dining uh, dining tent, good dining tent, and you'll get a cook uh, hot meal.
actually helicopter can come up to camp too in case of rescue so one of the rescue helicopter coming here blue ten and this yellow ten uh, those are like toilet tens <laughs> so after camp two so the camp three is the one then where you will start using the Season, uh, so your life actually depend after like camp to there's a height uh, where you last climatize right from that point you start taking the oxygen uh, and so this is challenge there so you have to it's a initial like about like what three hours is like a gradual climbing then you start climbing on the low surface which is like on the mountain so you can see that camp tree. So, okay. so somewhere camp two is here. Uh, here somewhere camp two. We started. Actually, the whole climb is very slow. Like you take like four or five breaths to get one step. So this is the camp camp tree. Actually, camp tree is in a lot safe phase. So you uh, so you every time you clip yourself like when you come out from the tent, you have to clip yourself because this is just in a face of the mountain. Like uh, it's not a plain plain ground. So usually in Everest, uh, the weather is morning is clear, by afternoon wind starts and, and all snow and wind starts afternoon, by evening late uh, night, again it's, everything is top like. So I I didn't get any sleep at the night actually. Uh, just <laughs> was too afraid. Like all the wind, I thought like it will blow away everything. So once you camp three, uh, the first thing Sherpa does is like uh, lead the stop and uh, melt the ice to get water because your water is already uh, finished. So uh, once you get the water, we drink a lot of water, then fill up all our packs. So camp three you get uh, when you are going. Oh. Uh, so in some mid bit, uh, so we start around around like 12, uh, 12 around 12 a.m. Uh, not a.m. like p.m. from that camp two. I took five hours to get into the camp tree and we stayed the night at the camp tree. Then early morning around six o'clock, 
you start from camp three to camp four, which take around four hours. Oh, sorry, 10 hours. <laughs> so this is going from camp three to camp four. Uh, one of the challenges here is called yellow van. Also, it's a rocky part. You have to climb a rock. It's about 100. Uh, this area is called yellow van. Uh, actually, it's very hard. Like. Your camp on like I always sleep. So here I am actually going through that area. Uh, I think next next scene will see how how high it is that area. Is. So all the cloud you can see like below everything. So this is the camp four. Uh, you really feel once you're there, you feel like in another planet because all the people like they are working with masks, and the place is like full of oxygen cylinder. Some old tents that uh, actually broke there. So. Here, once you get the oxygen, like everywhere you go, right? Even to go for toilet also, you just carry the cylinder, like so. So we started at six o'clock on our camp three to camp four, right? Uh, we get around four o four o'clock, uh, four p.m., and we took about uh, three three and a half hour rest. Then we started the summit with around evening 7.30. Uh, so you, the last portion. Uh, This is the uh, this is the route uh, camp four to Everest. So uh, here is camp four. So this is the camp four. Camp four. From here, it's like a straight climb. So this is the first point where you can take rest. It's called balcony. Uh, <laughs> and actually this, this portion is right it's so steep right uh, actually all your climbing through uh, rock and uh, sand like uh, because it is steepness right uh, ice cannot stay here like it's uh, so so, but good thing is that you go at the night. So it started in 7:30. Uh, it take about five hours to get here. Uh, this is this is one of the area like whole climbing, uh, where little bit of plain area. It's like a this much of a, like about 10 feet maybe, and and uh, 7:30 right. It take around uh, five hours to get there, and and uh, there where you first send your like cylinder the cylinder you use you use started to right that will i want to like finish there so you get it uh, get there uh, from balcony uh Start you about like uh, two hours is kind of uh, it's it's uh, you are ascending but it's not that steep but real challenge is started from here so this area is again like a rocky area 
Uh, I want to sew another. So actually, that area, uh, it looks like something like this. You can see the climbers here, just going up. Uh, so after going about, uh, this is one of the milestone, like once so after going there, right, uh, climbing this, uh, this is called South Summit. So from South Summit, it take another like uh, two hours here. So from Camp 4 to Balcony, five hours it took me. Then from Balcony to here, five, five hours. And another two years, uh, two hours from here to all the way top. So this is the map of like how the last part is. Uh, it's called the hill. Here is the south summit. Then you you do a little bit of descent here. Then after that you start climbing. So. So this is one of the like most famous uh, and com very complex area. Uh, this area is called Hillary Step. So you cross the Hillary Step. Then ultimately. This is the summit. So all the way go over top, and this is the top of the world. Uh, I have a video like which is showing this how that route is. So this is not my video. Someone video I just compile it uh, just to show it. Uh, so to remember a few, few things uh, that. South Summit, uh, South Summit, Hillary Step. So th this is where before South Summit. So usually you start at the night, right? By, by more. So you sun will come up before the South Summit. So this is how it South Summit look like. So this is actually rock. Uh, I think uh, when that video is done, it was more snow was there. So when. I, I was there uh, this year, it was very less snow. So, from South Summit, you can see all the way at the top, then you have to go down. Uh, so this is the last part actually that where people are seeing and uh, this is called Hillary step little bit of like rocks You need to climb and you can see like uh, the ridge is very small and it's and same rope like people are coming up and down uh, sometimes the congestion happen So how this look like uh, there are a lot of rock mm -hmm. We'll take one or two steps then. So this area is very windy because it's like a passage. passage. Uh, so this area you take about like say five to ten uh, way to get one step really tired because you already like climb whole night and this is again like very complicated area like very hard and you some of the places you you have to crawl just to pass like it's on rock and it's all down you can see all the way 
and this is the win there is a win i'll have another video where you can protect yourself from the win so so before before starting the hilary step uh, what happened to me was like i thought like uh, i'll take some water then uh, just preparing from the next next phase right so i took out the marks uh, it was a little actually it was a long a little longer time then uh, i put the marks after drinking water then i could not breathe like uh, so i was like uh, it was like kind of a shocking uh, and i was like kind of very nervous what to do what not to do then immediately the sherpa came then he took uh, he, he take out his marks and give it to me then we started trying to find out what uh, then we find out that the moisture that come outside of our breath right that gone inside few of the valves and it blocked that yeah, it immediately it become frozen uh, frozen and that then uh, we able to clean it then kind of uh, get the valve fixed then we went up so next in incident was happen uh, in the hillary step uh, so uh, one of the rock i you are already you are clipped in so i kind of slip then i gone little bit far then then i immediately realized that i was about to hit somebody's head then uh, then i saw that there is one person kind of lying there uh, uh, then i asked the serpa about like uh, so he was actually i know the person in the sense like uh, i have a climbing friend who when i went with him last year then he went in 2019 and there is a big congestion in this area so nine people have died in that hillary step and one of him like his body is still lying there so his body is totally intact like as if he is sleeping and this is little bit of like a because of sun rays right uh, this color but uh, his face hands everything is like intact like it's just you will feel like just like a sleeping there i kind of really uh, felt bad but since i was whole focus was going top i didn't think too much but i just uh, continue so you see that the wind right sometimes the wind is so so heavy right you try to protect yourself you say you basically get down use your down suit this one to kind of protect your face and from the wind uh this is this is the same like a uh, hillary step there were right the the reason is very even like it's not even fully one feet so you have to go through like and cross a lot of climber in between so whoever the climber always want to be in the safe side so you'll see some uh, some videos here so you can see like it's very little like so you will always try to go go the inside so then you are safe other <laughs> So you'll just you'll just be other side. You don't talk anything. Just let the other other guy figure out. <laughs> so, so usually, what you do, you first see like how far how far is the other clip you need to take. Uh, so he's taking out the one clip, then he'll put it there. First, you have to figure out how far. Then, uh, then you need to figure out how to like really cross that person. So those are the ice screw. so this is my summit video so so ultimately climbing it over i want to get there
So there's a flag at the top, so you go then, but that's a very small, small area, so you immediately come down and race. And so this is how it looks like from top. Uh, one of my Sherpa, there's a second Sherpa, will be helping me. So, I want to show here one thing here. Uh, okay. Uh, so, if you if you can see my this here, two thing here. One, I took out the marks, yeah. marks here. So. Uh, in a, to get the certificate from Nepal government, right? Uh, so average certificate they issue by the Nepal government. So there are certain rules like how we verify that person really submitted the average, right? Uh, so he has to take one picture, taking out the mark. So usually the other uh, your Sherpa is ready. Then you just take out the marks for a few seconds, and then he take the photo. Then that's the right. Uh, second thing, you can see this, right? Some kind of beard here. Uh, so this actually. Uh, it's so cold about minus 40 to 60 degrees it goes in the top so whatever breath the moisture come out right usually it slowly uh, condense and freeze and it become like a ball it will become a big ball on your like uh, below here So I took that gamosa like uh, wherever I go like usually I take a gamosa so some some mountain you can tie Everest you can tie like there is a lot of flag so so. So uh, I got there, like a lot of uh, asked me like how it feel like in the top of the world. So uh, once you, before really getting the top, right, few step you really feel good, uh, good like uh, you are almost at the end of your like whatever you are thinking for so long. Uh, but uh, then you feel little bit of fulfillment. But once you get in the here, the flag, then this is what you see from the flag below. So it's a state like kind of a fall, uh, which is about 12,000 12, feet. So once you see that, then you realize, uh, immediately you realize like where you are exactly. Uh, so this is this is coming from the Nepal side. Uh, if you climb from Everest from south or north, this is the route and this is the international border and this is kind of a direct fall. So once you are, once you are there, right? Uh, then you re immediately realize where you are exactly. Then immediately start thinking about like how to come back. So you think like, okay, I somehow come climb up. Now I have to uh, climb down. So and most of the time you are climbing in the night, right? Which is kind of an advantage. You are not thinking too much. You are just thinking about the person ahead. So if he make one step, so you just try to go behind him, uh, take down another step, right? But. I was remembering all the places where I climbed the rocks and this thing, right? But when I was at the top, really that sense of survival came in. Then immediately I was thinking like uh, how I go down and I took some water and fixed her. Then the then, uh, image of that dead body also came in my mind like. So I was thinking like uh, somehow I have to go down otherwise my fate will be same with that person. So that indirectly somehow motivated me and once get the water, little water, so next phase is to come down. So we start at 7.30 evening, right? So it takes 12 hours to get in the top. Uh, we took race, uh, I took race about like uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, then came down, down it took uh, six hours. So it was like journey of from Camp 4 to there, um, uh, 18 hours. Uh, before that, uh, there's 10 hours from Camp, three to camp four, then three hours rest, 
18 hours. So it's already 38 hours. Uh, once you are get camp four, you need to assess yourself like, are you too tired? Can you go down? Or you want to stay the night at camp four? So camp four usually it's in dead zone. So it's not advisable to spend a lot of time there. So as far my like, uh, usually you'll feel how, how good you are. So I feel good then Serpa also kind of, they, they usually able to assess the client, how, how you're feeling. So they also discussed then decided to go down. So I go down to camp two, it took me another 10 hours to go down. So 38 hours, three hours rest, then uh, go down 10 hours. So it's already the 48 hours I came in the camp to night around 11.30. Uh, I got in at 11.30. Uh, one Serpa was waiting with again my favorite Dalvat. Uh, so I ate a little bit of Dalvat, then immediately come to the tent. Uh, I was kind of collapsed, right? Uh, so I was trying to open my booth. I was unable to open it, uh, go to so that I can sleep a little bit. Then it was in my mind to open the booth. So I tried two times, but I, I didn't have the energy to really uh, take out my booth. So at six o'clock I wake up, then I was only able to get out, uh, take out my booth. I was so tired. Then uh, immediately I was really thirsty. Then I uh, came to the dining tail, uh, drink some water and drink some food. Immediately gone back, sleep for about three hours. Then 10 o'clock, I started, uh, started descending from camp to the base camp, which took another 10 hours. Uh, so this is something like how like my timing was. Uh, it was really like that red part I was talking about. I was really tired at the end. Felt like like sometimes when you sit, sometimes take rest, you feel sometimes like you will never get up. But uh, after taking rest for a few minutes, then you realize okay, you need to get down. Then your energy come back. Then you uh, uh, come down. Uh, I want to tell feel. Few few things here. Uh, I think whatever you see so far, right? It's a lot of like physical and mental thing. Uh, what I realized, like uh, going to Everest, right? That area. It's also like a, not only your physical and mental journey, uh, but it's a spiritual journey also. The one thing what I realized, right? You spend a lot of time yourself alone in the track, in the camp. So when you sleep at the right, right? So that get, give you some kind of opportunity to reflect on life. So most of the time you are here like busy with so many things, right? Uh, we don't have that uh, time to really think ourselves. So this is what I realized like uh, you, you like kind of reflect on life or you about life, what you want to do, all right? And what good things you have. So you will count everything uh, that blessing on you. That's one. Uh, the whole area is so gigantic, uh, gigantic right? Uh, you'll feel the power of power of nature like uh, in, in our mythology lot of mythology like people going to himalaya you have a lot of stories this right uh, you'll, you'll you'll feel like some kind of truth maybe there uh, there you'll feel because the whole area too gigantic uh, gigantic and power of nature like the avalanche the way the avalanche has come and this thing all see right you'll feel like the power of nature and at the same time you'll feel like uh, how tiny your insignificance, your existence, if you're not there also, it does not matter. Uh, so that also you realize. And also you learn about the minimalism. Uh, so we have a lot of things, like we are blessed with a lot of things, but actually you can survive with very little. Uh, that also you realize. At the same time, uh, average is a teamwork. So team is started at the home. So without any support from my family, especially I'll thank to my wife, Jyoti. Uh, so for last two, three years, uh, they, are, they are part of my team. Uh, so I, like Jyoti, like last, at least last two years, like I have uh, gone through a lot of training, so need a lot of good food and this thing. Uh, I remember like every day say cook like a, a food, a food for me, like never like, uh, sometimes we all have some other food, but it's still the kid will have like food from outside, junk food, but it's still say cook for me. Uh, cook for me for last two years and a lot of care uh, so that's teamwork in the home uh, so you can see like uh, I'll have some videos about how the surplus they put uh, all the stuff right 
So without the help of Sherpa, right? Uh, Sherpa and all the team, it's not possible. And third thing I want to say, right? Uh, yeah, it requires a lot of hard work, hard work and a lot of preparation, but uh, going at the top, uh, at the same time coming back safely, uh, it's more, more of a blessing, uh, I'll say blessing. And I'll say like, I God given me a person to really experience this journey. So I'll give you one, with, uh, one example. So uh, uh, in our company, his name is Raita Sarpa. So he's the record holder climbing Everest for 26 times. Wow. Okay. And he's the team lead, uh, lead for like all of them. So this time uh, he got snow blindness and he need to be rescued and flow home. Uh, came to to uh, came to all the way to Kathmandu. So the person who has done see, 26 time Everest uh, still need to be rescued. So it's more of a blessing. Uh, you may be expert or expert, right? But the power of nature and right, it's so so high. You you have very little control. At the same time, I had the opportunity of seeing the uh, in the history of Everest. The worst worst uh, year was last year when the COVID. Uh, about like 60 to 70 percent need to come in the two weeks come back. So it was like worse year, year of Everest. At the same time, this this uh, this year is the best year of Everest because the climate, uh, the whole weather was so good. The window was there, multiple windows, so people can spread out, no traffic jam. So so at the end, it's it's I'll say it's a blessing. And again, uh, I want to thank everyone like. Uh, my absence, like everybody supported Jyoti, and from last two years, uh, everyone supported me, like all of your love, and I was just feeling like I was playing in a school a school team, so where everybody support, like open-hearted, they come, like they support with open heart, like they don't think about anything else, about just to like support that person. So I was feeling like just like playing for the school team. Uh, I want to end with one video, uh, so that people who, who made this work, right? Uh, this is the video of Kumbu Ice Fall, how really they put the letters and this thing. So these are the people because of whom we are able to really go there, experience this uh, whole climbing. So people carry those letters all the way top, then they make those all the... Uh, Join the ladder, right? Because somebody has to do it, like all the ropes, somebody has to put it. Then only we are able to go and experience this journey. Uh, This is video from uh, BBC, how they really uh, create the route. It's so wide, three ladders need to be lashed together. The first crossing is always the most dangerous. The risk is the unsecured end will collapse. Temba knows that the icefall doctor he replaced died the previous year on this mountain. Down a crevasse. Before Temba starts, the team leader makes... So usually, like, every time we go for up, uh, there is always kind of puja. You, go, you have to go through, like, two rounds of a stupa. Then they always start with a uh, puja. So 
So, do people fall in those ladder? So, this is one of the videos that's given. <laughs> So if you are clip like uh, if you are not really nervous, uh, I think that that's one part of the Everest. Like uh, how come you can control yourself? It's very important. Uh, you'll you'll end up a lot of situation. Like uh, so, you need to train yourself how to become. So you can see this person like though he's like. Thank you. 